Welcome to Fountain of Life Ministry, where lives are being changed and Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. We like to thank you this morning for tuning into this broadcast, ever how you are receiving it. I believe that it is by the Spirit that was leading you to turn into to turn. <laughs> To turn to this broadcast, amen, whether you're receiving it by Facebook or YouTube or whatever, I believe you were led by the Holy Spirit to do so. So get a book, get a pen, get some paper, take some notes. I believe God will speak to you this morning that will change your life, amen? amen. Praise the good Lord. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles with you or your iTunes and iPads and telephones and whatever, you know, I, I believe in you looking at the Word with me. Because I'm not infallible. You know, I may say something that's not correct, but if you got the word, you can follow me. You can follow behind me, and you can see if I miss something or not. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. The word will bear witness. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to, um, let me give you the title of my subject again. Uh, the title of my, no, I ain't going to give it to you until I get ready. Amen? Uh, if you was here last week, you know what it is, but, but I will give it to you again. Um, now, I'm going to quote some chapters and verses. You don't have to turn there. You don't have to turn until I tell you to turn. Amen? Habakkuk 2 4 tells us it says, But the just shall live by faith. That's Habakkuk 2 4. Said it way before Paul said it. Amen? In Romans 1.17, you've heard Sister Mary preach on it a few times. It also tells us, in the latter part of the verse, the just shall live by faith. Now, just means the one that's been justified. If you've been justified, you've been acquitted, you've been saved, hallelujah, you're a child of God, well, you have instructions now how to live Amen. in case you didn't know. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. Once you got saved, you got some instructions how to live. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Most people don't know how to live. But God gives us instructions. When we got saved, he gave us instructions. And 2 Corinthians 5, 7 tells us we walk by faith and not by sight. Now he's telling us how to walk. He's telling us don't use our sight uh, to calculate and to evaluate what you see. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Hebrews 11, 6, the Bible says, it is impossible to please God without faith. Right. Impossible. 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 And Ephesians 2, 8 tell us, it is by grace and faith that we're saved. Hallelujah. And James tells us this. He said, James said, hallelujah. Let me paraphrase what James says. James has said, you cannot ask God anything without using your lips. As a matter of fact, I, I do want you to go to James chapter 1. And, and we're going to look at verse 5 and 6, and then I will interpret for you. Amen? See, if you want to be a Christian, you can't be Christian just to be, just because you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. That makes you a Christian. It's true. But what you going to be good for? You don't want to be just a Christian. Uh, you want God to use you. Amen? Amen? You don't want to just say, I'm saved, but you want God to use you. Thank you, Father. The Lord is awesome. Listen, listen to James 1.5. He says, any of you like wisdom, James 1.5, if any of you like wisdom, let him ask God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in what? But let him ask in what? Nothing wavering, for he that waver is like what? A wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss. So we use all these 
these scriptures about faith. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there's over 200 some verses of scripture and the Bible re uh, refers to faith. God wasn't trying to hide it. If he were, he wouldn't put it in there so many times. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yes. So my interpretation, look, he says, when you ask, he says, if you ask, listen to what it says. But if any of you like wisdom, let him ask of God. That give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. What if we don't ask? You don't get into wisdom, do you? Right. Hallelujah. Praise God. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. In other words, when you make your petition to God and you ask God for something, you must believe you receive it. And if you believe you receive it, you can't wave. What do you mean, Pastor? You can't believe that you received it today and tomorrow. You don't know if you're going to get it or not. Amen. Amen. Now you're wavering. That's right. You're wavering. You're double-minded. Amen. And that's the reason why a lot of Christians don't win. They never see the manifestation show up because you're wavering. You get in a church service where the atmosphere is just right. You get all fired up. Come on, Pastor. And yeah, you can put out a fire with a glass of water. That's how you feel. But what happens when you walk outside these walls when you're not in that environment? Attitude change, person, your personality change, everything changed. It changes because there is no root of faith there. Huh? So I, I want to talk to you this morning about the language of faith. See, if you going to live by faith if you're going to walk by faith uh, you need to talk faith amen hallelujah Woo! thank you father I get excited because see I can go back and, and recall all the things that I missed in life because I didn't know how to do certain things and then when you, when you miss certain things and you don't get it and it don't show up, you know what the devil tell you? Must not be in your timing. Well, can I say this to you? If you can find it in the word, it's your timing. Amen, amen. Huh? People say it's your season to be blessed. I mean, it's a good song. I like the song. But you know when your season is? Your season is when you get the revelation knowledge of the word of God. When you get that knowledge, the revelation knowledge of God, that's your season. If it wasn't your season, God would have never gave you the revelation. Revelation means to reveal. So if he didn't want you to have it right then, he would have never revealed it to you right then. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. And then even after it's revealed to you, it's going to be by faith that you receive it. Amen? Can I get an Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So we want to continue our subject title. Woo. The language of faith. Now, according to the scripture that we read, I don't know of any other scripture that's more paramount than the ones we just read. Woo. I've said a thousand times, I've said until Jesus come. Once you get saved, the next thing you need to learn is faith. Why would you say that, Pastor? Because from then on, every challenge in your life will require faith. Okay, Lord, I go there. Thank you. Go to 1 John, if you would. 1 John. Let's go to 1 John. I think it's 1 John chapter 5. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5. You know, this is, see, I love it when the Holy Spirit talks. And um, that's a good thing when he talks. Amen. First John chapter five, look at verse four. It says, for whatsoever is born of God, that's you, right? Overcome the what? The world. The world system, right? And this is what? The victory that overcometh the world. What is it? 
our faith. So how are you going to overcome? How are you going to be prosperous? How are you going to be the victor, the victor instead of the victim? By faith. By faith. So you're going to be the victor instead of the victim. Amen. But it's going to be faith that's going to cause you to be the victor. Amen. God said to the apostle John, write this in the Bible and let them know this is how they're going to overcome all challenges and everything that the world can put before them. This is how they're going to win it. They're going to win it with their faith. Amen. Now listen, if you notice in Habakkuk 2, 4, he says the just shall live by his faith. But when Christ came on the, saints, on the scene, we live by his faith. Amen. So get this now. To live by your faith, it may not be good enough, strong enough. But you live by his faith. Huh? Back in the day, before Christ came on the scene, the just had to live by his own faith. But now, we don't. We live by Christ's faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, how does faith come? By hearing. Now, if faith is going to be the victory, you need to find out how I'm going to get this stuff. Huh? Am I right? Because God says, this is how you're going to overcome the world, with your faith. See, we sit back and we cry and we whine and we complain because we didn't got this, we ain't got this, life didn't treat us good. You know, my daddy this, my mama this, my husband this, blah, 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 blah. You know, yeah, all that, I'm sorry, all that stuff happened to you. But you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry that it happened. It should have never happened. But before it happened to you, this verse was written in the Bible. It was already there. Nobody just ever told us. Amen. Faith put this woman and me back together. Faith did it. My wife told me, go get married again. I don't care. But she'd have been sorry if I got married. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say, faith put us together. I had to work the faith system. Because I knew there was a little candlelight still burning there. Yeah, but it was lit. That's all I needed. <laughs> uh, praise God. I just, I just needed to be lit. Just. Hallelujah. And so now I took my faith and took advantage of that little lit candle. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. God wants us to get this faith thing together. Because all you really simply saying, I trust God. That's all you really saying, I'm trusting God. I trust God. But we know how to. But we need to know how to trust God. You hear a lot of people say, "Just wait on the Lord. Just wait on the Lord." That sounds good and religious and churchified. And we should wait on the Lord. But you know what? Waiting on the Lord actually means it means to anticipate. Why are you waiting on the Lord? You anticipating. The Lord told me one day, "If you believe me and you're waiting for it," He said, "Then make preparations." I made preparations when I knew my wife was going to come back home. I made preparations. Mm -hmm. You've heard the story before, but Julie told me last week, Pastor, faith come by hearing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to hear something more than one time before it really just sinks in. That's right, Pastor. That's right. Amen. That's right. Again and again. Yeah. Hallelujah. You got to make preparations. Faith come by what? Hearing. All right. Now we just seen how important faith was. God says you can't even please me about it uh, without it. So that ought to tell you, hey, I want if you want to be a God pleaser, right. learn about faith. Amen. Learn about faith that you want to be a God pleaser. Amen. 
And you know it's not for his benefit, it's for yours. That's right. That's right. What do you have you can give God? What do you got you can give God? What do you got? I mean, how can you even bless God? There ain't but one way you can bless him, that's with your mouth. Because you ain't got anything he didn't make. You can't bribe him with anything. So you, you know what? I tell you, thank you, Lord. This is the Holy Spirit again. It's the Holy Spirit again. See, if you, if you, if you know the Holy Spirit, uh, now help me, Lord. Help me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Uh, hallelujah. And, and uh, Second John, you don't have to turn there, verse 1 and 4. The Holy Spirit had John to write these words. He says, I rejoice greatly that I've, I rejoice greatly that I found of the children, what? Walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. Now, he rejoiced when he found that we was walking in truth. You can walk in love but not necessarily walk in truth. Do you know it's your faith that gets you saved? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Love is good. You know, Jesus, God did not say it's impossible for you to please me without love. He says it's impossible for you to please me without what? Without well, Pastor, are you saying love is not important? Love is very important. That's what sent Christ to the cross. The love. He sent Christ to the cross for everybody. But everybody ain't living for God. Is that right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He says you walk in truth. In order for them to walk in truth, they had to hear truth. They had to know truth. And so you got to know truth. What's the title of the message again? The language of faith. You see, you can't muster up faith when you just want it. You can't muster it up. See, faith, it needs to be, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. That's a lifestyle. That's a lifestyle, how we live. So if you just started trying to live your lifestyle by faith right now, it's going to take you some time to get up there. That's right. It's going to take a time to develop. So now, Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you if you're going to uh, uh, endeavor to learn the faith language, mm -hmm. well then you got to continue to hear the word of God. That's right. The Bible says, "How with all will a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed to the word." Take heed to the word. See, church is not an entertainment center. Amen, amen. It's a place where you are informed. Because when you walk out these four doors, the devil is still real. And he's still out there. And he comes in all shapes, forms, colors, and fashion. Amen. And you need to know when you meet him. And the word that's in you will let you know. Huh? The word of God is sharp, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. Even knows the intents of the heart. The Bible says it, it is a discerner. It can discern. So it's important for you and I to get the word in our spirit. It's important for you and I to practice the language of faith. And that way you don't have to muscle it uh, Try to usher it in when sudden destruction comes. The Bible says when sudden destruction comes, God is my confidence. Well, if you don't know what God said about the destruction, you know, you're going to panic. And you're going to call everybody in the world you know to get on the phone and pray with you. 
I want you to stand in the gap for Sister Thorne. So I want you to do this right. Sister Thorne. So I want you. Blah, blah, blah. Don't you know how to do it yourself? Don't you know how to pray yourself? Don't you know how to stand in the gap? It's okay to get people that pray with you. But see, you ought to. Why, why if that person ain't home? Huh? See, there's a general prayer. And then there's a prayer depending on what it is that's wrong. How many Christian folks know that? Not many. See, you got a general doctor, then you have specialists. Amen? All right? Praise God. Well, you got a general prayer, and then you got certain prayers for certain things. How many Christian folks know that? Not many. Not many. Hallelujah. And many Christian folks don't even know they have authority over whatever it is that's taking place in their life. They don't know they have authority. They don't know. Hallelujah. Praise God. But if you stay in this church any length of time, you're going to know. You're going to know. Amen. Thank you, Father. I'm still talking on, a, on the subject. The title of the message is the language of faith. Amen. Amen. We, know, we need to know how to talk faith. Are you with me? Now, I want you to go to Luke chapter 22. Luke 22. Thank you, Father. Luke 22. I will never lose again. You say, well, Pastor, that's bragging. No, that's not bragging. I never lose again because of the tools that I use. Hallelujah. See, the tools that I, I plan to use is the tools that God gave me. Amen. Luke 22, are you there? Give me an opportunity to get there. See, you don't have to lose any more this year. Amen, amen. Good news. You don't have to lose another battle this year in nothing. As a matter of fact, this year you can over every come, everything, you can overcome everything that presents itself in your face that you don't want. You can do it. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Luke 22, is that what I said? Yes. All right, I want you to look at verse, uh, look at verse 31. Verse 31, and the Lord said, Simon, 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 behold, Satan has what? Desire to what? Have you that he may do what to you? Do you know that's what Satan wanted to do to every one of you in here? Get a hold of you and sift you like we. I remember my grandmother years ago, uh, uh, she used to take flour and put it in this little sifter and used to shake it, shake it and, and shake it. And shake it. and all the, the, the lumps and stuff will be on top, but the nice fine flour will be out in a bowl somewhere. Right. Well, Satan wanted to cut you up just that fine. Right. He wanted to annihilate you. He wanted to cut you up so bad and so fine until when the wind come, it'll just blow you away. But look what Jesus said that next verse. But, uh, but I have prayed for thee. Come on. That thy faith yes. fail not. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. That tells me if my faith is intact, uh -huh. he cannot prevail against me. Huh? He cannot prevail against me. He said, but I have prayed that your faith fail you not. Oh. So Jesus is saying, Peter, it's going to be your faith that's going to keep you safe. You may get attacked, but he won't prevail because of your faith. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. So when you have overcome certain things in life, go tell your brother how to overcome it. Yes. And see, Pastor Taylor has overcome a whole lot of things in his life. And right now, God has got, you, got me teaching you, telling you how I overcame him. God loves me no better, no more than he loved you. And the same thing he done for me, he'll do for you. 
God is not a respected person, so it wouldn't matter if I was just a layman. It wouldn't matter if I was just somebody sitting in the congregation. It wouldn't matter if I got saved yesterday. He would do the same thing for that person that he does for me. But I'm going to have to develop my faith. Amen? He's not a respectable person, but the faith is. How you with me? He said, Peter. He said, the devil wants you, boy. He want to cut you up, man. He want to sift you like wheat. He said, but I already prayed for you. That your faith fail you not. John says, this is the victory. That overcome the world, even our faith. So it's still good and still working today. Your faith. You learn faith. I say you learn faith. Amen. Don't let anybody tell you I'm tired of hearing about faith. Amen. Your father said you can't even please him without it. That's right. So you keep learning faith. You keep learning faith and keep winning these victories. Amen. That's what you keep doing. Amen. That's what you keep doing. The doctor told me. And I said it before, I said it again. The doctor said, told me, uh, you're going to have to take a blood pressure pill. I said, I understand if you get on blood pressure pill, you can't get off of it. The doctor said, yeah, that's pretty much that's true. I said, okay. So two weeks later, I went back to the doctor. She checked my blood pressure again. She said, Pastor Taylor, you had to find medical signs. I said, what you mean? Your blood pressure is 120 over 70 something. She said, how did you do it? I said, okay, since you asked me how I did it, I'm going to show you how I did it. I took Psalms 103, verse 1, 2, and 3. Teach, teach. The Bible says, I have forgiven you for all your iniquities, and I have healed you from all your sickness and disease. So how did you do it, Pastor? See, we need to know how I did it. See, I'm going to show you the language of faith. See, how did you do it, Pastor? Well, Every time I took any kind of medicine, I said, Father, I just want to, well, let's say right now, I, 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 I'm taking a, a pill for something or whatever. I said, Father, I just want to thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. I heard what your word said. Your word said you have forgiven me for all iniquities and you have healed me of all my diseases. Father, I'm taking this medicine which does not d d diminish my faith, but I'm just taking this medicine, Father God, to speed up the process. I want to thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's by your word yes. that I'm healed. Amen. This medicine only assists me to get to my healing quicker. Amen. That's right. That's now, now, let me tell you something that's very important. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. Most people pray for the same thing over and over and over and over again. You, you're wrong. Right. You're in error. Right. That's why you ain't got it. You keep praying for the same thing. Huh? See, uh, uh, let me give you an example. Go to Mark 11. I'm going to show you something right here. Mark 11. See, somebody said, I've been praying for it for years and years. I ain't got it. You ain't got it because you've been praying for years and years wrong. The Bible says how forcible are right words. So we got to get our words right. How forcible is right words? So we got to get our words right. Mark eleven twenty three. Listen. Listen to what it says. Mark eleven twenty three. You read it a thousand times, so it just reads a thousand and one times. Verse 23 says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Wait a minute. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. Okay, yeah. Verse 23, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou, what, cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said, not God, which he said, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. And then it says, therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. When you pray. Right. When you pray. When you pray. Now, how many times do I go pray again for the same thing? Remember now, he said, if you believe it, you shall have them. That's right. So he says, if you believe it, you have it. So should I go back tomorrow and pray the same prayer? 
No, because he said, when you prayed, and if you believe that you receive, you shall have it. So do I go back and pray the same thing again? No, I do not. So what do you do, Pastor? I go back and I say, Father, I want to thank you. According to Mark 11. See, see, here's the language. Here's the language right here. Father, I want to thank you according to your word. According to Mark 11, 23, you told me when I pray, believe I receive and I shall have it. I just want you to know, Father God, I believe that I have it. And I want to thank you in Jesus' name. I didn't pray for it again. What did I do? I gave him thanksgiving. I gave him praise. See, my language of faith, the, li the language of faith is not in future tense. The language of faith is present tense. Now. Right now. Huh? See, you got to learn the language of faith. Quit saying, well, I know one day God is going to do this for me. Going to do. See, you got that way out there in the future. Going is future tense. Keep it in the present tense because God is now. Faith is now. Faith is not tomorrow. Faith is now. So we got to learn the language. We got to learn faith language. We got to quit saying, well, thank God as good as it is. No, uh-uh. That sounds good and commendable. No, 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 no. I thank God it's like he said it is. That's right. That's right. Hmm? And I can change what it is. Well, I got y'all fired up. Y'all talk, talking to me on this message right here. <laughs> well, that's good. I'd rather for you to talk than to be dead like a cabbage head. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. See, I believe. Listen. When I had the young man that come to me and said, Pastor, this bill in this church is uh, for sale. Really? Because my wife and I, we looked all over town for a building. Mm -hmm. And I said, really? So they told us where the church was. So my wife and I and Sister Mary, we came out here and we walked the grounds. Because he said, every place where your foot shall thread upon, I've given it to you. I prayed and asked him for it. So when I believed that, I, that we had the property, I didn't pray and ask him again for it. I stayed in the thanksgiving praise mode from then on. Father, I want to remind you of April the 12th. I asked you for blah, 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 blah. And here it is July the 9th. Father, I want you to know I still believe I receive it now. That's faith language. I say that's faith language. I still believe it. So just because you didn't receive it on March the 3rd, and here it is right now, December the 25th, it does not mean that God didn't answer your prayer. It did not mean that it wasn't granted to you. See, we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. You can't see it coming. You can't see God moving stuff out the way. You can't see God getting that stuff to you. So, so don't faint. That's right. Working on your behalf. Hallelujah. Caleb says, I was 40 years old when God gave me this mountain. And here I am now. I'm 85 years old. Give me my mountain. I still want my mountain. God promised in his word is still good. Still good. Huh? Care how long it's been. It's still good. The seed, the word of God is a seed. It's an incorruptible seed. It won't die. You can't kill it. Hallelujah. You can't kill it. If he spoke it and told you it's going to take place, it's going to take place. Hallelujah. Praise God. So he says, when you pray, believe you receive it when? I believe I receive it now. That's faith language. Someone say, was well, Cindy, I know you went to the hospital and blah, 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 blah. And uh, how you feel? Now, she can be feeling like a, a bag of dog bones. Ever how that's supposed to feel? But if she get that question asked to her, what should she say? Oh, I tell you what, man, it's worse off before I ever went there. That may be a fact, but that's not truth. Huh? Hallelujah. What does she have to say? I thank God I believe I received my healing. 
I don't have to submit to the feelings. I submit to the word. I submit to the faith. Praise God. So that's faith language. Faith language. Faith language. Call the things to be not as though all the world. God taught us to do that. He taught us to do that. It says, and even God. And if God can do it, can't you do it? And even God. Call it the things that be not as though the world. But what you want to hear sinners say, oh, I'm feeling so bad. Because so, you want to pat on the head and, and hug and love on her. No, no, no. She's going to say, I thank God. I believe I'm healed in Jesus' mighty name. Well, how can you believe that hurting like that? I didn't say I was. I said I believe I am healed. And you can't judge me on that. Huh? You can't judge me on my belief. We're talking about faith language. See, you got to get trained in your language. You got to get trained how you talk. Huh? You've been talking what you see and not what God said. So you got to get trained in your tongue. Huh? Hallelujah. The Bible says death in life is in the power of the tongue. You got to train your tongue. See, you can't train the tongue unless the mind be renewed first. Amen? Because, see, they hooked up together. Amen? So you cannot train the tongue until you renew the mind. Do you hear me? So you trying to train your tongue not to say this, not to say that. First of all, you got to renew your mind. Because the tongue can only speak what the mind thought. Huh? Hallelujah, praise God. Renew the mind, see. My mind has been renewed on my health, my prosperity, my marriage, my church, my everything. Huh? Oh, yes, yeah, it's been renewed. I'm learning. See, faith has a language. It has a language. Amen? Most people talk what they see. They say, well, I just tell it like it is. And that's why you've been getting what you're getting. Because you've been telling it like it is. Why don't you tell it like Jesus said it? Huh? Huh? And black folks, uh, listen, years ago, black folks used to have this, this saying. See, I told you I had no fear. I ain't bound up. I'm a free man. But we black folks had this thing. Say, what's happening, man? Ain't nothing happening, man. Ain't nothing happening. You know, this is your world. I'm just living in it. You know, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. But see, those are wrong words. It may not then mean no harm. But words are seed, whether they God words or whether the words are the devil. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you. See, we got to learn faith talk. But before you can learn faith talk, you got to get in the Bible and read the Bible. You got to put the word in your spirit and your spirit will transmit it to your mouth when you open your mouth. Amen. It will. Amen. It will. Amen. I, okay, Lord, I go there. Go to Matthew 12. Thank God for Matthew. See, this is the Holy Spirit. See, whenever I'm doing this and I'm not following my notes, I want you to know this is the Holy Spirit. Now, when the Holy Spirit talking, you shut up and listen. Uh, I'm just telling you like it is. That's right. And when the Holy Spirit talking, you just take notes. Right. All right? Because see, it's not Pastor Taylor. I'm just a vessel this morning being used. That's all I am. Amen? Amen. Uh, 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 and and you, you take it. I said before, I said again, when, when my wife is up here preaching, when my sister's up here preaching, I don't look at her as my wife. I don't look at Mary as my sister when she's preaching. I'm looking at these two women as the mouthpiece of God. they still my sister and my wife, but they're not serving in that capacity. They're serving in the capacity of a mouthpiece of God. So I'm going to pay attention to what they say. Amen. And I serve those over with, then I just piece them out if I want to. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Look, look, look. Matthew 12. Are you there? All right, look, look, see. Look, 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 look. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Look at verse 34. 
It says, O generation of vipers, how can ye be evil speaking good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? Out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? Oh, so the mouth, the mouth will give you away. It'll give you away if you're a Christian or a non-Christian. Huh? So out of the abundance of the what? The mouth speak. So the heart and mouth connected together. Huh? See, you can hide your, you can hide your easy ways away from me for a while. To a point you can hide your mischievousness. For a point you can. But when I, if I can get you talking, <laughs> if I can get you talking, the mouth going to, the, 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 the heart is going to tell on you. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. So we want to get the word in the abundance of our heart so the mouth can speak it. So we can learn that faith language. We want to get the word in the abundance of our heart. And see, when we get the word in the abundance of our heart, see, when you run up on the devil, listen, you know what will you know come out of you? As soon as you get attacked, the word of God. Because you got it down in your spirit. You know the language. Thank you, Doc. You know the language, see? Y'all with me? Yeah. Faith, see, we need to learn faith language. Jesus says, I pray that your faith don't fail you, boy, because if it do, you you done. You done. You done. So we want to keep our faith built up. We want to keep our faith built up. <laughs> See, the devil has crept into the church and has put a sneered people's conscience and has, look, it has dictated to people what they should believe, what they should not believe. Is that right? Oh, this is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, y'all may be on this subject for a year because God is just keep changing everything. He's not changing it. He's just adding to it. Amen. That's right. This is why when I'm writing out my message, I don't care uh, what it uh, looks like. Uh, uh, it looks like, hey, you don't have enough to finish. God can take three scriptures and make a whole meal. So I don't worry about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I want you to turn your Bible to Jude. Y'all know who Jude is? Uh, uh. Woo! Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Uh, Jude one twenty. Put it on the board. Jude one twenty. He says, "But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most what? Holy faith. Your faith, holy. Don't forget it. Your faith is holy. Don't you forget it." Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Doing what? How are you going to do it? You're going to pray in the spirit. But the devil has told the church, you can't do that. You can't pray in the spirit. Because, uh, you know, some people say, well, that's devil talk. The devil don't want you to pray in the spirit because he can't understand what you say. He cannot understand what you say. So that means he can't mess it up. Amen? Thank you. See, he don't want you to pray in the Spirit. Because he don't understand what you are saying in the Spirit. Huh? He can't understand it, so he can't go ambush it. Because he don't know what you... He, he don't know. He, he just can't know. He can't stop you. And, and, and uh, thank you, Lord. I go there too, Lord. <laughs> the Lord is working this thing, Jeff Nolan. Hallelujah. Yes, see, he don't want you to say anything in the spirit. Because, see, if you say stuff in the spirit, you didn't threw him off. Amen. He can't set up his ambush. He can't have no victory. He can't get no victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Look at, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians 14. You see, the devil has... Try to, the devil has told us to believe certain things and don't believe certain things and blah, 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 blah. 
He's a lie. See, you can know the word of God, but if you don't use it and exercise it, it don't do you no good. You can have money in the bank, but if you don't go withdraw it and put it to some use and, ch and, and exchange some, some merchandise with it, it don't do you no good. You can know the word of God, but if you don't practice it, it won't do you no good. It'll be just like you don't know it. Here's why the devil don't want you to talk in the tongues and stuff of that nature. Uh, verse 2 says what? For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto who? Man. So I'm not even talking to myself, am I? Huh? 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 Thank you, Jesus. But who am I talking to? Unto God. God. For no man that's including myself understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he does what? Speak what? Mysteries. Mysteries. What's that? Hidden truths. So the devil can't understand the truth that you're saying because it's hidden. So he says, Son, did you shut up. Don't you, don't you speak that stuff in church. Don't you speak none of that stuff. That's of the devil. It sure is of the devil when he don't want you to pray and he don't want you to speak it. It's of the devil. Thank you, Father. Okay, Wayne, this is your fault right here. Go to Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. You want to bet? <laughs> Romans chapter 8, are you there? Hallelujah. Look at verse 26. He said, likewise, the spirit it helped our infirmities. That's a weakness or inability or, you know, you just can't get it done by yourself, right? He says, that's right, a challenge. Likewise, the spirit itself, the spirit, the spirit also helped our infirmities, for we know not what to, what? Pray for as we all. Hold it right there. He didn't say you didn't know how to pray. He said you didn't know how to pray for it like you should. So that tells me I need to know how to pray for some stuff. So that means I need to know the language of faith. I need to know how to talk some stuff. Huh? He says, he didn't say you didn't know how to pray. He said, you don't know how to pray for the thing like you ought to. And God is not obligated to answer your prayer if you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Listen to what he says. He says, verse 26 again. Uh, verse 26, likewise the Spirit also helped our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit itself, making intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. That's why the devil can't understand it. He's uttering. He's just saying something. He doesn't even know what he's saying himself. But he's going to say that until the Holy Spirit takes it over. Amen. Then the Holy Spirit is going to take your prayer request to another level. A higher level. And then he's going to reveal to you what you even prayed for. Amen. That increases my faith now. All right. Hallelujah. And look what it says now. Verse 27. And he that searches the heart knows what's in the mind of the spirit. How many times have you had things in your heart, in your spirit? You couldn't pray it out like you want to. You couldn't articulate it. Amen. You know how you feel, but you can't say what you feel. You just can't lay it out there where it can be comprehended like it should be. But the Holy Spirit can because he knows what's in your heart. So the devil wants to shut you down in that area. Because if he can shut you down in that area, whoo, praise God. He can mess up your plan. He can mess up your plan. The king of Syria was warned against Israel and could never win. Every time they find out Israel going to be over here, uh, uh, there's a prophet. Uh, 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 there's a, uh, 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 every time he found out that Israel going to be over here, uh, uh, he would send somebody uh, uh, over here to get him. By the time he get there, he wouldn't be there. And so the king said, somebody's in this camp is telling this man where I'm setting up my ambush. Somebody's in here doing it. Ain't no way he can know. And he said, no, master. No, no. He said, no, no, no. It, it, it ain't nobody in here telling them nothing. There's a prophet in here. And that prophet, which is a messenger of the Holy Spirit, he said, it's the prophet in here. He's the one telling these people where to go. He's the one telling these people where you're going to be at. Holy Spirit is the one. See, he'll tell us what to do. Holy Spirit will tell us what to do. Woo, hallelujah. He'll go beyond your capacity of understanding. He'll go beyond your capacity of knowledge. Amen. 
Hallelujah. This is why you got to be open for the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. See, it's the Holy Spirit that's caused your faith to build up. That's right. He says, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So when you got something to pray about, you don't know exactly how to pray about it, but this thing is important, it's most essential to you, and you really don't know how to pray about it. Go pray in the Spirit over it. Let me tell you how Pastor Taylor do it. So, Father, I have to make this decision right here. And, Lord, I really don't know. I've heard 15 other people, but it's just not registering in my spirit. It's not selling in, in my spirit. Father I, don't, ba- Father, I don't know what to do. So, Father, I'm taking this situation up to you, and I want to thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, listen, I'm by myself. I'm not in church jumping up like somebody crazy, you know, speaking out and don't have no interpretation. No, I'm in my home. I'm in my closet. I'm in my private setting. If I were to jump up in church and say that, if I do it by the Holy Spirit, there'd be an interpreter over there somewhere. There'd be a prophet over there somewhere. Amen. If it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. But if it's inspired by my flesh, it ain't nobody going to be able to interpret what I said because you jumped up in the flesh and did it. Amen. So the devil talks to you about that stuff. Don't you do that, boy. That's the other devil. Boy. He's a lie. That's right. He don't want you to get the victory. That's right, Pastor. He tells me, the Bible tells me I'm talking directly to God. Who don't want to talk directly to God? Who don't want to talk directly to God? Amen. Father, please help me in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm talking the language of faith. So you, in order for you to talk the language of faith, you, you have to build up your faith. Well, well, let me say, you have to get the word in you in abundance so you can learn the language of faith. You can't go looking for a job. Say, well, they probably won't hire me because uh, 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 I'm 58 years old. They probably don't see no career in me. They, they, see, they can't get no longevity out of me. I'm 58. I'm 62 years old. See, that ain't the language of faith. That's right, Pastor. That's right. Huh? That ain't no language of faith. That's the language of doubt. That's it. Mm-hmm. Moses was 80 years old before he started preaching. 80 years old before he started his ministry. Before he got in it, so you always say, it's hope for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was 80 years old. Amen. Before he ever started the ministry. Amen. But see, that kind of talk, that is not faith language. That's right. That's right. Faith language is that, Father, I want to thank you. I prayed about this, and I believe I have received favor. That's right. Huh? I thank you. Well, you go to that place right there. They say, I'm sorry, we don't need nobody. So what? That's just one door. That's all. Amen. That's That's just one door. It's the man that would be consistent. In his deeds, that's the man that'll be blessed if he will continue. Amen. If he will continue. See your faith talk, your faith talk won't talk like that. That's right, Pastor. Huh? Let me tell you something. Zachariah's done the same thing. Angel came to Zachariah and said, Elizabeth's gonna have a baby. And he first thing he done is start talking about, well, how this gonna be? And she's well string of years, and I am too. I'm old too. You know, I, I got my you know, so how this gonna be? And the angel shut up his mouth. You know why the angel shut up his mouth? Listen, listen. Now, I want you to get the understanding of this now. The angel shut his mouth because he was getting ready to block something God was going to do. You hear me? He was going to, see, you can block God from working in your own life. Amen? Yes, you can. See, God had ordained Elizabeth and John and Zechariah and God was going to let you stop it. Thank you, Lord. Now you can say it against yourself and he won't say nothing to you. He'll let you talk all you want to talk. But this is about him. This is about what he ordained. Huh? You, you know why come my wife couldn't stay gone from me? Let me tell you something. It was ordained. It was. There are certain people God will ordain together. And some of us, we just go get our own wives, the one we want. 
we, we looking for a certain qualification. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Right <laughs> Hallelujah. No, be led by God. See, mine's this this marriage was ordained by God. I couldn't have went out there and re got remarried. I, if I wanted to, I'd have been miserable. Yeah, I sure would have. <laughs> I would have been. Why you say that, Pastor? No other woman could have made you happy. Of course they could. Absolutely. But this one was ordained. It was ordained in 1952 and 1954. And that was a long year, a lot of years. But God ordained it. Now, you can start talking your negative talk, and I guarantee you, God will not come in there and intervene. Mm -mm. See, this right here was based on John the Baptist and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Huh? Thank you, Father. That clock said I got six minutes. Y'all got six minutes. You got 12. I like you, brother. See, we got to start talking the language of it. See, you got to... see. If, it's, if the word of God is in the abundance of your heart, as soon as something come up, you won't panic. Because right. the Holy Spirit in you will bring it right to your attention right away. Hallelujah. You got the victory. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You got the victory. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I went broke today, I can't even fathom myself being broke. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's just say if something went wrong today I couldn't panic That's right. my spirit man is trained Hallelujah. it's trained what to do yes. Yes. because the word is in the abundance of my heart Hallelujah. Amen. amen now that don't mean I don't pray I still pray my children ain't neither one of them doing what they're supposed to do and I know it but I ain't gonna let the devil tell me they're gonna die and go to hell. That's right. That's a lie. Hmm? No, because I'm a, I'm gonna keep them lifted up before God. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God tells me in Psalms 138, verse 6, 7, 8, somewhere along there, He says, I will perfect those things that concern you. My family concerns me. Now, when they get grown and out on their own, ain't nothing you can do but pray for them. But when they're controllable, you know, you can control them to do what they need to do. But once they get them out of your nest, amen, you still continue to lift them up. And then he'll tell you like he told Kenny Hagen one day, Kenny Copeland. Kenny Copeland said, why are you bugging me? Every time I turn around, I know it's you talking to me. Why are you bugging me? He said, because your mama is always bugging me. They're always bugging me about you. So when you let them tap them children up to God, I'm telling you right now, God ears not dull. Huh? God ears is not dull to that thing. Not one bit is it dull. Amen. Hallelujah. Now that music you hear means I got three minutes. I'm a, I'm a user all three minutes. I ain't gonna be like Carlos and Mary. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Woo! Thank you, Father. Now, what's the title of our message? All right, I want you to go to Acts chapter 4. And we'll close with this one. Acts chapter 4. You want, you want to guess it again? Praise God. Acts chapter 4. Are you there? All right. Look at verse 8. It says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole, let it, no, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucify, whom God raised from the dead, even by him do this man stand here before you hold. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, 
which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were what? Unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them. What happened? That they had been with Jesus. Whoa. When last time you've been accused of being with Jesus? Do your life, do your lifestyle sh uh, show it? Huh? Do your lifestyle show it? They took notice. How? Because of his speech and because of the boldness. The language of faith. The language of faith. They took Peter, people will take notice of you according to how you talk. Huh? The language of faith. The language of faith. You don't have to tell people, I'm a Christian, I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, I'm a this, I'm a that. I, I, I haven't told a person who I was since 1989. They said, what's your name? Larry Taylor. I don't say I'm evangelist nobody. I don't say I'm pastor nobody. I don't say I'm prophet nobody. I say my name is Larry Taylor. Amen. That's right. So they say, well, what do you do for a living? Now that's a different story. I do for a living. I preach the gospel. Amen. But I said to this, if my attitude didn't reflect who I was, if my personality, if my speech did not reflect who I was, well then I ain't ready to even clean it. Huh? So if my body language, if my attitude language, if it don't tell you who I am, well, then I haven't arrived then. I haven't arrived. Amen? The language of faith. Peter had the language of faith. And then he was bold. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Amen? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. The language of faith. So, I want to leave you with this.